mixing with my mixing tip using VCA groups in a mix. Um, now I have a session here. I'm going to switch qu uh, quick over here to um, the um, mix window and talk about grouping a little bit in VCA groups. If you've upgraded to Pro Tools 12, uh, you may have noticed a new grouping type. And uh, so if I uh, shortcut my way to a quick, quick group, excuse me, uh, you'll notice something that's called VCA Master. And to understand what that is, so I'm just going to create like maybe six of them here, and uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what a VCA master is. You notice with the VCA master here, you have uh, solo, uh, mute, um, and all of that sort of stuff, input, out, uh, uh, record, um, and then you also have uh, nothing here <laughs> in terms of inserts and sends and stuff like that, because no audio actually passes through the track. So in working with a VCA group, you're saying, well, if there's no audio passing through, why would you have input and record buttons? And, and I'll explain basically how this works. Um, VCAs uh, or VCA groups go back uh, to the 70s and 80s with VCA automation systems. And uh, what VCA automation systems were at the time was a way of uh, creating fader automation data uh, that would could be that could be I'm sorry stored in a computer. And the way that this essentially would work is that, um, and uh, at the mix stage, you would have these faders that had no motors in them. You had a, a VCA component. So VCA stands for voltage controlled amplifier. So as the audio signal would pass into the amplifier, you would have a fader that, and the actual fader, which normally has a wiper, sort of like a, a vertical or linear potentiometer. So a potentiometer is like a volume pot or level control. and so what would happen is, is that a steady uh, static uh, direct current voltage would be fed into the VCA and the fader would determine how much of that VCA DC voltage passes through to the output. And that the output of that voltage feeding the VCA amplifier would tell it how much to attenuate the signal. And in fact, um, although you would typically see readings on a VCA fader that would go up say to plus 12, um, I believe it, VCAs are basically attenuation circuits. It's a voltage control attenuator, um, technically. Now, there may be some that add amplification. That I'm not sure. I'm not sure of all the technical aspects on that side of things. That's not important. So, But what's interesting, though, is that the no audio actually passes through the fader. Okay, And so as a result, automation data could be written that was very fast, and VCAs are very fast at making those attenuations, so you could write in automation data that would be very accurate and fast. The alternative at that time were moving fader systems that literally had hardware motors built in, and there would be strings attached to the motor that would be pulling the fader well, on like a pulley system that would be dragging it up and down. So as you wrote automation rides, the faders were generally very heavy, uh, and the motors were, one of the problems were noise of the motors as they were moving the faders up and down. Um, and the automation tended to be a little bit slower, not as reactive. And so most of the development of moving fader systems was making them more efficient. Later on, they went to different mechanisms that were cheaper, but early VCA fader, I'm sorry, uh, moving faders were sometimes like a thousand or two thousand dollars a fader. I mean, they were, they were ridiculously expensive for all the motor mechanisms and the intricacy that was connected, plus a whole computer system to connect the automation. So when you think about that, that's insane because that would be, a, say, $1,000 a fader on top of the price of, you know, um, a 64-channel console. You're basically adding $64,000 just to have moving fader automation. Got to be very expensive. So in addition to these individual faders, and probably the most famous with the VCA automation was Solid State Logic, what they did is they had a bank of eight faders that were in the center of the console, in the center section. And again, no audio passes through them, but each individual fader would have a little thumb wheel that would assign uh, one through eight or zero. And then there was also an isolate setting. I'm not going to get into how all of that works, but essentially you could assign any given fader to any one of the eight VCA groups. And with that group, if you assign, for example, all of the drums to one of those faders, so let's say here that... I have a, um, a grouping, and in this case, uh, oh, there's no group here, so let me just kind of go to drums. So now I have a drum group. I could actually assign that drum group to this fader, and now if I mute this, you notice that all of the individual tracks mute. The cool part about working with this, instead of enabling the group 
on this is that if I enable the group on the individual track without the VCA fader, then if I mute one, they would all mute, or I would have to set that to not be the case. Or if I solo one, they would all solo. And what I could do here with the VCA, if I just say that uh, this, is my, uh, this is my VCA for drums, so I'll just call this drums. Now, if I hit a mute here, it mutes them all. If I hit a solo, it solos them all in, in uh, muting everything else. If I set it to input, it sets all of them to input. If I set it to record, it sets all of the members to record. And so now, if I wanted to pull the level up or down, they would pull up or down. So if they had automation on them, this fader would be static and allow those same levels to exist at higher or lower levels relative to what the VCA group is. So what it does is it separates the group from the individual members of the group. And that makes it a very valuable tool because in mixing, one of the problems and the frustrations of working with regular track groups is that in, in DAWs is that each member is essentially a master and also a slave uh, to whatever fader that you grab. So if I grab one fader, all of them will move. And then in Pro Tools, for example, I would use the control key as like a clutch key to allow me to mute or unmute or solo one independent of the group or move one fader level independent of the group. But once automation is in here, now all of those things start to fly out the window and it starts to become the wild, wild west. And what I can do here is it gives me the ability to say, hey, I like all my balances, but the drums are a little bit loud. So now I don't have to go to the edit window and pull down all of the levels for all those tracks at the same time. I can just grab a VCA channel, pull it down by however much I want to pull it down by, and then all the existing rides will kind of follow accordingly. Um, the idea then, if I kind of follow this, is that I can take this and now uh, let me just uh, enable a guitar group here. And so what I'm attaching this to is a group. So I'm going to attach this to guitars and now this becomes a mute for all of the guitar channels. And but what's cool about this is that if I wanted to work within, so there's a grouping within this grouping. <laughs> So now this becomes the overall level control, but it's easy for me to work like these are always independent of each other. Uh, whereas if I use the normal track group, if I pull this one up, then all of them pull up and I end up with this constant battle where I'm always having to work with, uh, with shortcuts and things along those lines to kind of uh, wind my way out or constantly enabling or disabling groups. Same thing here with, um, uh, with vocals. So if I have, uh, well, I have an all vocals. Let's just see if I have a, uh, and I have an all background vocals. So I don't think I have an actual track that is just uh, the two lead vocals with their harmony parts. So let me just create that group here. Uh, and I'll just call it lead vox. So, um, and then I have some uh, background vocals that are over here, probably because I, I colored, I think I actually moved these to line them up to each other. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and uh, modify that group and remove those two uh, that are in the middle there. And uh, okay, so um, now from here, I can engage those two guys together. And now I have uh, a mute like you could see here that uh, these guys are muted. So now I got that. Now it still maintains the solo isolation, you know, from the other members, but it mutes and you could see it's not like the hard, uh, like full color bright um, that you would get if you hit a solo, you know, within uh, the other individual tracks. And then I'll, I'll create a, a grouping here just in case I don't have one already of the full uh, background vocals. So this just, uh, um, I'll just call it, BG Vox, and then I created more groups than they have for the track. Um, and this gives me the ability, and actually in, in most cases, I, I would not actually use them the way that I wouldn't pull them necessarily next to the tracks unless I was working with the automation. I may keep them all grouped together. So if uh, this is like a lead Vox, I would set that up there. This is guitars. Um, oh, I guess there's already a VCA group with that name. Uh, guitars, okay, and then um, and then uh, okay. So now I got this. Do you know how 
Okay, so uh, I have to assign this group. That's why it didn't work. Uh, so now I have this, and I'm going to assign this group here, and now... Do you... And this gives me the ability to kind of shut down these. Now, this is... Um, you can see that the net audio that passes through here as a guide to show you, but there's actually no audio that actually passes through the fader. So unlike um, a group uh, return like I have here, so if I have a stem and I've routed, for example, all the drums to bus one and two and the effect outputs uh, that are feeding, you know, all the reverbs into bus one and two, so now I have an audio stem. And if I mute it from here, you know, then what I'm hearing is, you know, the, you know, whatever is assigned into that, the bass and drums, for example, here. Um, and so with this, so for an individual track, I don't need to, I'm going to hide those other VCA groups. But um, the idea then is that these are, have audio passing through them. And this gives me the ability to, say, put a processor just on that stereo return, a compressor, an equalizer, that sort of thing. And it makes it easy when I go to print stems at the end of the mix. These are audio stems. Um, but the VCA groups are a completely different thing, and they're very valuable in the mixing process, especially as you get into the thick of automation. Um, or if you're trying to do something, here's a classic example where um, uh, where you look over at your mix bus and you realize you're hitting the mix bus too hard. And so what ends up happening is you end up in a thing where you're trying to pull the level down of all your audio tracks. It's not practical, but you could go here to a VCA group, assign it, pull the level down by 2 dB and grab each of those members, each of those VCAs, pull them all down by 2 dB, and then you would have your identical mix, um, everything down 2 dB. Um, and the alternate would be to pull it down here at the group fader, um, but sometimes that can get a little bit tricky. And also, uh, for me personally, I like to keep that at zero. Um, so in lieu of doing this, or if you didn't have a VCA group, then maybe putting a trim here would be a better solution if you felt like it was going into like an analog tape emulation or something and hitting it too hard. That would give you some level control uh, for balancing it going into the mix bus. But keeping that gain structure is one usage. I can also write automation on these faders. So if I wanted, for example, the drums to drop out at a particular point, I don't have to write automation for all of those tracks. I can actually write a mute on the VCA fader, write a fade out on the VCA fader, and the automation doesn't exist on the individual tracks. The cool part about that is that quite often in you know, in other uh, processing of stems and stuff like that, you may want to eliminate that fade. And because it's on a separate track, you would have the ability to isolate that or turn off that automation on that individual VCA, allowing you to keep certain tracks open for printing stems or different variations or versions. So it just is a way of giving you another layer of automation in the process. Um, there are, are several levels. If you have the HD uh, uh, version, then in addition to volume, which you could see here, which is individual volume rides, you also have volume trim. Uh, this is sort of the VCA component. Um, VCAs, what's interesting about them that's different from moving fader automation systems, the old moving fader automation systems, when you grab a fader, you're erasing what was there prior and you're writing new information in. In a VCA system, and that's what the trim system is here, if there are existing rides in the system and you do rides uh, and you trim those rides up, it, all those rides are preserved inside of the level change that you bring up. So you actually can effectively do rides on top of rides. You do all this intricate riding in a vocal, in a particular uh, verse section, you realize that one line is uh, too low. You could go to the trim on that layer and raise up that particular section, you know, and you would give you basically two layers of automation if you needed it. I like to use this also as a way, uh, sometimes I'll write all of my automation on the trim and then it leaves my uh, regular uh, fader here static. Uh, so the automation and the fader will be riding, but because the information exists on the trim layer, what ends up happening if I raise the fader level up by a dB, all the rides will still occur, but a dB louder. So it keeps the fader some without automation, the main volume uh, path, but the trim path would actually have all the automation data. And with that, you now have three layers of automation that can be independently edited and worked. 
So um, you can have all of your intricate rides done on the trim layer. You could have your overall levels from section to section on the main faders, and then you could have one that gives you the overall level for the whole thing. Um, and you could see how like uh, this can sort of stack up and, and drive yourself a little bit crazy at a bit. But um, VCA faders are a very, very, very powerful tool uh, to work with. I love them. And, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate them more now because they're available. I generally have not demonstrated or used these in a lot of the classes because not everybody has Pro Tools. And this is not a, a feature that is specific to Pro Tools. So I don't want to get in too deep or have too much stuff that is, you know, uh, so particularly D a, a particular DAW specific where you couldn't accomplish the same type of things, say, for example, in Logic or Ableton or Studio One or, or whatever other software you happen to be using. So anyway, that's a little bit of an explanation and hopefully it helps. Uh, I know a few people have been asking me uh, in particular about this, what are VCA groups and how do you use them in a mix? And I uh, thought I'd uh, just do a quick thing to show you uh, how valuable they are. All right. It's a mixing with Mike mixing tip using VCA groups in a mix.